probably already know that everything is made up of little tiny things called atoms. You might even know that each atom is made up of even smaller particles called protons, neutrons, and electrons. And you've probably heard that atoms are small. But I'll bet you haven't ever thought about how small atoms really are. Well, the answer is that they are well, really, really, really small. So, so you ask, just how small are atoms? Well, to understand this, let's ask this question. How many atoms are in a grapefruit? Well, let's assume that the grapefruit is made up of only nitrogen atoms, which isn't at all true, but there are nitrogen atoms in a grapefruit. Well, to help you visualize this, let's blow up each of the atoms to the size of a blueberry. And then how big would the grapefruit have to be? It would have to be the same size of, well, actually, the Earth. That's crazy! You mean to say that if I filled the Earth with blueberries, I would have the same number of nitrogen atoms as a grapefruit? That's right! So how big's the atom? <laughs> That's really, 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 really small. And you know what? It gets even more crazy. Let's now look inside of each atom. That's the blueberry, right? What do you see there? In the center of the atom is something called the nucleus, which contains protons and neutrons. And on the outside, you'd see electrons. So how big is the nucleus? Well, if atoms are like blueberries in the Earth, how big would the nucleus be? You might remember the old pictures of the atom from your science class where you saw this tiny dot on the page with an arrow pointing to the nucleus. Well, those pictures, well, they're not drawn to scale, so they're, they're kind of wrong. So how big is the nucleus? So if you popped open the blueberry and were searching for the nucleus, you know what? It would be invisible. It's too small to see. Okay, let's blow up the atom, the blueberry, to the size of a house. So imagine a ball that is as tall as a two-story house. Let's look for the nucleus in the center of the atom. And you know what? It would just barely be visible. So to get our minds wrapped around how big the nucleus is, we need to blow up the blueberry up to the size of a football stadium. So imagine a ball the size of a football stadium, and right smack dab in the center of the atom, you would find the nucleus. And you could see it. And it would be the size of a small marble. And there's more. If I haven't blown your mind by now, let's consider the atom some more. It contains protons, neutrons, and electrons. The protons and neutrons live inside of the nucleus and contain almost all of the mass of the atom. Way on the edge are the electrons. So if an atom is like a ball the size of a football stadium with a nucleus in the center and the electrons on the edge, what is in between the nucleus and the electrons? Surprisingly, the answer is empty space. That's right, empty. Between the nucleus and the electrons, there are vast regions of empty space. Now, technically, there are some electromagnetic fields, but in terms of stuff, matter, it is empty. Remember, this vast region of empty space is inside the blueberry, which is inside the Earth, which really are the atoms in the grapefruit. Okay, one more thing, if I can even get more bizarre. Since virtually all of the mass of an atom is in the nucleus, now, there is some amount of mass in the electrons, but most of it is in the nucleus. How dense is the nucleus? Well, the answer is crazy. The density of a typical nucleus is 4 times 10 to the 17th kilogram per meter cubed. But that's hard to visualize. Okay, I'll put it in English units. 2.5 times 10 to the 16th pounds per cubic feet. Okay, that's still kind of hard to figure. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Make a box that is 1 foot by 1 foot by 1 foot. And let's go and grab all of the nuclei from a typical car. Now, cars on average weigh two tons. How many cars' is nuclei would you have to put into the box to have your one-foot box have the same density of a nucleus? Is it one car? Two? How about a hundred? Nope, nope, and nope. The answer is much bigger. It is 6.2 billion. That is almost equal to the number of people in the Earth. So if everyone on the Earth owned their own car, and they don't. And we put all of those cars into your box. That would be about the density of a nucleus. So I'm saying that if you took every car in the world and put it in your one-foot box, it would have the density of one nucleus. Okay, let's review. The atom is really, really, really small. Think atoms in a grapefruit, like blueberries in the earth. The nucleus is crazy small. Now look inside the blueberry and blow it up to the size of a football stadium, and now the nucleus is a marble in the middle. The atom is made up of vast regions of empty space. That's weird. The nucleus has a crazy high density. Think of putting all those cars in your one-foot box. 
I think I'm tired. The signature characteristic of uranium is its instability. Uh, the nucleus in particular is on the edge of breaking apart. It's uh, constantly emitting uh, these packages of protons and neutrons and flinging them off of the nucleus in an attempt to regain stability. That's radioactivity. And uh, this is what causes the damage to cells in, in animals and human beings that uh, can eventually cause cancer. Um, this is the essence of the danger of uranium. The 1940s and 50s were boom times for uranium mining in the West. Navajo miners, like my grandfather and his brothers, lined up to mine the yellow ore that led to the atomic bomb. <laughs> 